Hey, in this set of videos, we're going to be digging right into Box 2D Physics. What is Box 2D? Well, you've probably played this little game called Angry Birds, or if you haven't, you know somebody who has played it. And that's driven with a physics engine, and it's using the Box 2D physics engine. And Corona SDK just happens to include Box 2D as the physics engine there. So does that mean you can create Angry Birds? Well, you could create a game like Angry Birds or some other physics type game. And in fact, we're going to create a little game as a sample for this set of videos that uses the physics engine. And you can actually go on to turn it into a real game. It's kind of a mini game or the essence of a game, but you could take it and build on it. The sample code for this set of videos is in your working files folder. So go ahead and look in there for a folder called Box2D Physics. I've already dragged mine to my hard drive, and I've already dragged it into Outlaw. And we've got it here. And go ahead and open up main.lua. Now, in this version of main.lua, I went ahead and put in a ton of code in here already, because this is stuff that we've covered in the past, and so we don't need to cover it again. Let's just dive right into the physics part of things. But before we do that, let me just kind of run through here to kind of bring you up to speed on what is here so that you know what's going on before we get started with the physics aspect of things. After our normal bunch of variables right up at the top, I've got a couple variables here that are forward references. So we'll be creating an object called monkey, and we'll be creating an object called grassfront 320w. Also, there's a local variable called pileup that we're setting to true, and that's because there's going to be two different things you can do with this source code. And by setting this to true or false, it will do one or the other. And that's just so that I can use the same bunch of source code to show off two different aspects of the physics engine. Next, we're doing something here that we haven't done before. We have used the math library in the past, but we're going to be using it several times here. And it's always good practice to localize these math routines that you use all the time. So instead of saying math.random down in the source code, we're actually going to be able to say mrandom. It's going to do the exact same thing, but because this is a local variable, it's better on memory. Now, in a sample app like this, where we're going to have maybe 100 lines of code or 150 lines of code, it's not a big deal, and you wouldn't have to do that. But it's the kind of thing you should know about, and so I decided to throw it in here and get you started on that way of thinking. Now we have a table full of objects, banana, banana bunch, pineapple, backpack, canteen, hat, and statue. And these actually correspond to some of the images we have here. Over here is object underscore backpack dot ping, object banana, banana bunch, canteen hat, pineapple, and statue. And we will be getting to those in a little bit. So continuing on with the source code, there is a function called spawn objects. I'm going to come back to that later. And then we have a function called setup display like we've had in the past. And then right underneath that, we're actually calling that to execute the code that's in there. And inside there, we're setting up a background, and we're creating a monkey. There's our monkey. And we're setting up some ground, which is a new rect. So it's just a rectangle. And then there's that grass front thing, and that is just another image that we're displaying on the screen. So let's go ahead and run this just to see what this initial thing does. And there we go. We've got our jungle, and we have our monkey, and we've got some ground down here, and that's it. So let's give that monkey some physics. Let's make him affected by gravity and other forces. Now to do that, up here at the top, we're going to say local physics equals require physics. So we have to say to Corona SDK that, hey, we want the physics library. So now we have that, and we have to then start the physics library. So we do that with physics, colon, start, no big deal. So now if we save this and run it, there are physics now inside this little app here, but nothing's happening because we haven't to say that any of the objects that you can see are affected by the physics. So let's go ahead and do that with the monkey. And so down here where we create the monkey, we're going to say physics.addbody monkey. All right, so let's go ahead and try this. Oh, okay, hang on, he's gone. Let me refresh here. Okay, so we have physics happening, and the poor monkey is falling down. Why didn't he stop at the ground? That's because the ground doesn't have a physics body attached to it yet either. So he's still going. He's still falling. So let's go ahead, and on the ground, let's add some physics. So for physics here, add body, and this one's called grass front 
320W. Okay, let's try this now. Okay, I'm not sure if you saw this. I'm going to refresh this, but look down at the bottom of the screen where the grass is. You see the grass, the strip of grass is there at the front? It's actually falling down too. That's because it's being affected by gravity. Now, there is a way around that, and you can give a physics body a different type. There's dynamic, there's kinematic, and there's static. Now, static stays in place, so that's what we want. If you don't give it anything, it's dynamic, and that's what makes it be affected by gravity and things like that. So I'm going to say that the grass is static, and now let's go ahead and run this. Boom! Okay, this is better, but you can see that he's kind of standing up on top of the grass, and that's because the bounding rectangle for this grass is right up above it. I mean, the actual object itself, let me find the grass here, grass front. You can see the size of it. Well, the graphic itself goes right up to the top of each of those pieces there. So that's where the monkey is going to actually stop and rest. And that's why I don't actually have the grass as the stopping point. That's what I created this new rect here for. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to change this to ground. And what this is, this is a rectangle that's down at the bottom of the screen. It's actually behind this grass. So now let's go ahead and try this. And now he's like actually standing in the grass. That's because he's standing on the little rectangle that's behind there. So that doesn't really have anything to do with the physics, but it's just kind of a little trick that you can do when things don't look quite right. Kind of think outside the box and come up with a different way to handle that. All right, now let's go back up here to spawn objects. And I'm just going to go through this really quickly because we've covered a lot of this stuff before. We're setting up a local variable that is M random. This is a random number from one to the number of elements in this objects table. So it's going to bring back a number from 1 to 7. Then we're getting the name from objects and then from that 1 to 7. So it's going to pull back banana, pineapple, canteen, statue, something like that. And then we create new image using that name. So I showed you before that object underscore backpack dot ping. So if this pulls back the name backpack, we're actually creating that entire file name, the correct file name, right here, object underscore, and then the close quotes, the concatenate character, that object name we pulled back, and then we're concatenating dot ping on the end. So that way we can actually use one line of code to create objects for any one of these things that comes in here. Then we're setting the X to a random position on the screen, the Y up at the top. We're setting the rotation to about minus 15 degrees or plus 15 degrees, just to give it a little flavor when it comes on the screen. And then we're also saying, and this is going to come in later, if object index is less than four, that means if it's this one, this one, or this one, then object.type equals food. So we're creating a property called type, and it's going to be food, or it's going to be other. And that's because later on, we're going to be wanting the monkey to eat the food and not eat the other stuff. So we've got spawn object here that's actually going to create stuff on the screen. So let's make that happen. And we're going to do that with timer.performWithDelay. And we got into this last time. And so the delay is going to be two seconds, and we want it to call spawn object, and we're going to pass a zero as the last parameter. That means continue doing this forever until we tell you to stop. So let's try this. Okay, there's a monkey. He falls down now within two seconds. Okay, look at that. There's a pineapple. There's the statue. We've got these things coming on the screen, but they're not falling. That's because we haven't given them the physics object yet. So let's do that here. Physics dot add body. And it's going to be object. And we know that dynamic is the default, so we'll just go with that. So let's see what happens here. There's our monkey friend. There's a backpack. Okay, got a banana coming down. So we've got lots of things coming down, but you might be seeing some weird stuff happening here. Like, there's a banana that's floating above his head. So things don't seem to be exactly where they should be. And that's because the bounding rectangles are different than what you think. So let's set the draw mode. And we're going to set it to hybrid. Hybrid allows us to see the graphics on the screen, but it also allows us to see what the box 2D engine sees as the physical object. So we can see that the monkey there is a square. And the bananas are a square, actually. And that banana is a square. Everything is a square because that's what the shape of the graphic is itself. But you can see that what's happening is the two squares are hitting each other 
And so the objects aren't really resting on each other. So what we want to do is we want to be able to change the bounding box for these things so that they are more representative of the actual objects that we see on the screen. So the pineapple should be more rounded. The hat should be round, shouldn't have square corners on it, the banana for sure. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can change the bounding box on all of these objects so that they're more related to what the physical object would be. And then you'll see that these things are going to act a lot more like you would expect them to act if hats and backpacks and pineapples were falling out of the sky.